My Gavan and Melonine, and well met indeed. I'm Arak here, Galadareth, and head of the modding team behind Divide and Conquer. And welcome back to the same as we continue saving the world from Sauron and his allies as Dole Amroth. Last time, we were finally met with the joyful news that Gondor have taken back Eastern Osgiliath, and they've held Western Osgiliath so long they decided to rebuild that side, <laughs> even though the Eastern side is in ruins. Gaia Andros, however, has fallen to Mordor, and it will be for us to save that. Istion and a beleaguered force presses into Ithilien or northern bounds of Ithilien now, but he needs reinforcements. And if memory serves, reinforcements are coming. Um, Methrast and Dol Amroth are pumping out forces and we have a new full army ready to go. Uh, they've just got to sail up the Anduin, so Istion just needs to hold for some time. Elsewhere though, there is no really elsewhere I'm afraid. Um, we need to help Gondor sharpish because um, Isengard have broken through Parthior. They are now spreading in western Gondor along the Anfalas, and difficult times are ahead for the free folk of Gondor and Dol Amroth. But you will note that we are also getting our asses handed to us, if you'll pardon the French. Um, Prince Imriel and his army of cavalry is being schooled around Rohan by Isengard, but we are desperately trying to help Rohan stay strong, because if Rohan can bolster their forces and grow in power, they can hit Isengard, which will save Gondor as well. So, for now, the question becomes, are we going to hit the Witch King or are we going to go over and siege Minas Morgul? And that is a damned good question. The Witch King of Angmar comes. Now, of course, the Witch King himself is actually a really good general. Temple Knights, a real challenge for any commander. Um, we've got six pike units there, and that is it. So we're not really anti-cavalry. We've got a couple of spear units, but not really enough to deal with Temple Knights. Uh, Minas Morgul, though, as you can see, has quite a sizable garrison, where Shivus, the Desert Sand, resides, and Kirith Angul, under Leofric the Bowed, could easily pull that army through and attack us. We are at a point now, actually, where it is r we're rather up against it. Um, something I think I would quite like to do, now that Gondor have pulled across, um, ideally would be to go back and take Kyr Andros so that I protect Gondor's borders. Um, I wonder if we can do that once in Kyr Andros. Oh, it's Gothmog himself, and quite a sizable army. Um, and if we attack there, we're going to be hit from behind, almost certainly. In essence, Istion's army does not have enough men to battle any of the three options. But we've got to save Gondor, because they are under such pressure from the west. Um, and our fleet isn't going to be here for another three or four turns. Um, I think what we might do is pull back to this bridge and just wait and see what Mordor do. Because if we besiege either Cair Andros or Minas Morgul, that Witch King army will join in, and I think that will probably end Istion's force. Um, whereas if we can just wait for that larger army to come through. Um, so if we pull back to the bridge and wait. Gondor have got a lot of forces here. They should be able to hold for at least a time. Uh, and Imrahil, of course, is moving up to try and take back Ginyard um, so that we can sell it back to Rohan or even gift it back to Rohan. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not bothered about the money. I just want them to stay alive. Oh, Riddermark Axeman looks so cool. <laughs> Anywho, I think that is an end turn. Do we have another diplomat doing anything? No, you're trading up there and you're making us 2,000 gold. Nice. And Aradam, we already know where you are. So let's end the turn. Oh, the 99th turn. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, and Gondor have requested our aid. Yeah, go on. Oh, smashing. Oh, Gondor, you have absolutely exceeded my expectation. I'm thinking that the Rohan plan is probably actually our best bet. Because Isengard do not have the strength to take on a full-force Rohan and a full-force Gondor. But of course at the moment they're up against a half-force Gondor because Gondor is focusing on the east quite rightly. But if we can give power back to Rohan and let them flood into the gap, that will really apply pressure to Isengard that I think will then alleviate Gondor's woes enough to save Gondor's western bounds. Because ideally I do want Gondor's help in taking down Mordor, because Mordor is an absolute stack fest, and it is very annoying to deal with. Oh look, this army is totally not their cavalry defensive... Oh yes, that's fine. Uh, Mordor just trains trash after trash after trash. Well, they don't train trash, they're now at the point where they're getting varied armies. We've seen a few beasts, we've seen a few trolls, we're seeing Easterlings and, and Haradrim coming through. But primarily, of course, the core of their army are Uruks. Now, Uruks aren't actually too bad, but as you press Mordor more and more and they start to lose some of their money-making provinces, they shift and they start training trash again. But when they train trash, they can train so much of it that you will just have an almost never-ending spam of trash to deal with. 
Um, so I could do with Gondor's help just dealing with some of the clutter that we are almost certainly going to face as we press into Mordor. But here is Rohan's lowliest unit, Peasant Militia. Um, they've got a cool banner carrier and a nice officer, but they are little more than farmers and farriers and tillers and craftsmen given a spear and sent off to battle. In fact, I can show you that they only have two attack and five defense. Rohan has some of the worst infantry the game has to offer, but they do serve one very solid purpose in Rohan's roster and then quite nicely uh, in ours, and that is to act as the anvil upon which our cavalry will hammer our enemies. Now there's two Pinneth Gelen knights in there that we don't really need. But the enemy has to come to us, so we'll wait and see how their formation's going to spread out and see what it does. I know I've mentioned this before many times, but I cannot tell you how much fun I am having playing as Dol Amroth and being able to train Rohiric mercenaries. So that essentially now we just, it's a Rohan army that happens to be led by Prince Imriel. I feel like they've taken him in as one of their own and it's so much fun. Right, let's come out of time six. Now, Imrahil obviously is our damage dealer. Anyone that he charges into, he will essentially melt that unit. Um, the Royal Guard perform a similar function. But we don't really want to be running uphill if we can avoid it. But we're going to send the line out a bit further afield. Let's get these spread. Your archers. Uh, Imrahil, there you go. Charge into those Urukai. You might hit the raiders while you're going through. Where did we send the... Ah, oh, the Royal Guard are going over there. That's good. Right, yeah. So we'll send Imrahil into those um, Urukai archers, first of all. Well, let's just see what he does. He's going to soar through, I think. Yes, he's done a right number on a good... 10% of them died in basically one charge from Imrahil. He's such a good general. Right, pull back, pull back, pull back, pull back. He's also, of course, our faction leader at the moment, so Rohan really needs to keep him alive. Right, what we're going to do is overwhelm these Wag Marauders. Um, he's overwhelm them, overwhelm them. Are you charge the target, whatever you like. I want sheer numbers to just smash into the back of these um, and just cut them down. There we are. And then come around here. What about you guys over there? Did you get attacked? No, not yet. Perfect. And Imrahil. Oh, there we are. Look, we got them running. Fantastic, 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 fantastic. Right, ignore the wags. Pull up there like that. Imrahil, go for the Uruk Reavers. You come to the front there and then also go for the Uruk Reavers. And then let's send these guys in. Our cavalry has charged into the enemy there. That's good. Pull out again. They will mate our front line, but then we will we will hit them in the back when they do that. So you guys can go for these Urukai archers, and you guys can go for the Urukai raiders, and you can run down here to get out of the way. In they go. Ah, the air red lancers. Air red lancers are pretty good as well, actually. The Uruk reavers are running. The wags have come back, but they're shaken. Let's get Imriel out. And where are our royal guard? Just a couple. Oh, the Royal Guard are the ones that went and hit the Raiders. Oh, brilliant. And now the Raiders are routing. So take those down. Only half the enemy force remains. The Wag Marauders. Go and hit those. Imhill will get ready to hit the Archers. Ah, the double click. So many times double click don't register. And is, uh, this isn't even that old of a mouse, so I don't think it's a mouse issue. Maybe I just don't press the button hard enough. All right, hit those Uruk Reavers if you would. And you guys... Also go into those, and you guys also go into those. No, we won't send the archers, actually. We'll send the archers. Royal Guard, keep capturing those. Ah, this is basically over. Yeah. Those are Grievers, are the only thing the left. Yeah, there we go. The right, stop shooting Pursue in case you kill some of down. ours. What are we up to? 97, that'll do you nicely. Perfect. 45 men died, and only two of them were friendly fire. That's nice. Day. Remember it as the day of our most glorious... Um, the Rohirrim took 20 losses there, that's interesting. A peasant militia lost a few, which is expected, but I didn't expect the Rohirrim to lose so many. That's interesting. Now, that image, which could basically be anywhere in England, really, um, is, I believe, Hobbiton. Um, and on the hill to the right-hand side is Bag End. Um, one of the lights up there, probably the biggest building at the top of the hill, I should have thought. 
and then hop it in down below. Wipe them out. Oh, Captain E. Nye comes with us. Some more Rohiric forces. Now Shagrath is an even bigger army. Oh, and look, he's got Bane Guard, Spear Guard, two threats, and Berserkers. Berserkers no longer have an actual anti cavalry benefit, but they're just insane attack, armor piercing, and almost no fear that they have makes them very good against anyone. So they're always a threat no matter who you're throwing at them. Uh, but other than that, though, it's not an amazing army. But again, the Wargs, we want to get the Wargs cut down if we can. But this may well end up just being an episode of killing Isengard clutter as they try and come at us. But as we say, oh no, Eni was attacked and we're coming in as reinforcements. Oh, that puts us in an interesting position. With our mobility, we'll be able to really get behind and hit them where the it's going to hurt them. Seems to have turned against us. We must act and halt this turn of events. Oh, yeah, all I can do is start the battle. I can't do anything. Uh, this video, of course, went up much later than usual. And that's just because I didn't record it yesterday. I actually recorded it today, the day it went live, which is the 15th of, Oct of December, uh, of October. Um, so that's why it was later. Um, I recorded it in the morning before I started work and um, then popped it up as soon as it had processed on you, the YouTube. Right, Peasant Militia, let's get a move on. Oh, hang on. No, 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 and then a few more no's. We're going to run up to our allies over there. We're not going to try and hit them head on. Speed it up. As the last of our units come through, they also make their way to the hill. Perfect. We might as well use the hill. I mean, why not? Uh, and our reinforcements, they've got Aerod Footmen, who are fantastic compared to our peasant militia. Should we have a look? Aerod Footmen, attack of six and a 20 defense. Compared to our two and five, they are going to school our um, foot soldiers, undoubtedly. But you attacked us, mate, so come on, get up this hill. They will be most worried about hitting us, and of course Imhill is probably going to be their main target. But I can see the Wargs are on this side again. And again, I want to shut those Wargs down. So Imhill and the Royal Guard run over here. And then we'll take those two heavy hitters. Move yourselves like that. Move yourselves to there. And then the three that remain, we're going to run you... At the moment, we're just going to get you behind the line. Ugh, oh, don't charge in now. Don't charge in now. That's a death sentence. Right, if the Wargs pull for these guys, then we'll turn and hit them. And if they don't, then we'll catch them. Oh, they're not going to, they're not going to bother anyway. Ah, oh, there we go. They're going. Right, so you hit those Raiders. You hit those Reavers. You and you both hit those Marauders. Uruk Reavers, full on charge. As a Rohim are impounding, there were 200 and they've killed almost half of them in one go. The Raiders seem to last an awful lot more, an awful, last, last a lot more. They last better against the onslaught of cavalry charges and I'm not really sure why. Right, Imrahil and the Royal Guard should be able to melt those wargs down to almost nothing in sustained combat, which they are doing. Let's send you both into those Reavers where you can just finish those off. Pop one of those early doors. This is what I mean. Uh, many of you mentioned what you think the camel benefit is in the game. And I would say to you that um, thank you for the suggestions and thoughts. Um, that's, um, I think many of you hit the probably the nail on the head in that all it is is a general debuff to military stats but obviously it's not enough of a debuff to military stats because the um the wags just don't do anything they don't seem to have any appreciable bonus against cavalry um and I, I just i think whatever they've been given it's not enough but anyway, we're focusing at the moment way too much on this left-hand side. We need to start hitting some of these units in the back because our melee forces are not... or our ground forces, sorry, are not going to win the day today. Right, that warg is running away. So there we are, Bane Guard in the back. Pull down over here. The enemy general has died, so that's good. The morale shock will kick in. Run out, 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 oh, run, no, run, 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 literally one man got caught by like an, a hair's breadth and you've decided to stop the entire battalion, are you insane? Let's stop those archers. 
interesting that the um, spear guard are pulling back to now try and deal with us. I do not get caught by them. Do not get caught by them. Imrahil's going to go and shut down those berserkers. Because one thing berserkers cannot do is take a full-on Royal Swan Guard charge to the back. <laughs> oh, that was brutal. They have lost half their men. Even the berserkers fear the might of the swan. Of course they do. Of course they do. Uh, the We actually are going to smash them quite soundly and succinctly, I think, today. Although, pull out. Don't hit those. Don't let those Bane Guard catch you. Pull out, pull out, pull out, pull out, pull out. Right, all three of you, charge back into those spear guard. The spear guard is arguably the biggest threat. For the moment, the fortune of battle goes I'm way. hoping we can just sort of Let's overwhelm them with numbers. But it hasn't really worked there, has it? Every battle, though, we take losses. And every time we take losses, our army loses much of its potency. One cavalryman is worth the weight of about three or four of these foot infantry. But adding those peasants to the army has made a great um, help. Oh, the spear guard did not take kindly to Imrahil's charge in the side. And then the royal guard can come and have a go. Lance is down. Rohan's finest. Nice. I do not think the spear guard are coming back from this. Are they wavering and broken yet? They are broken. They are running away. Urukai archers. Let's get those now. Send basically everyone into them. Uh, ah, no. Imrahil, come back and hit these raiders. But this is now over. There the we enemy are. Army flees the field. Capture as many Pursue as we can. 98, 90, and 9. Perfect. The enemy we lost 261, vanquished. but we killed 1,300. A victory worthy of only the mightiest of generals. And Eni only lost 20 soldiers. How did he only lose 20? That's madness. That's absolute madness. We lost nearly 30% of our army, and he barely even lost 10%. Jammy bastard. Casualties inflicted, and Ered Lancers taking the top spot, closely followed by the Royal Swan Guard. And the Rohirrim taking third. Royal Guard dropping down on 126, which is not that great. And we lost 21. And we lost a few of peasant militia to our own fire, but that really doesn't care. These are the most expendable unit in in our roster ever. Um, I don't think there is a comparable Dol Abroth unit. Perhaps Coastal Wardens may be at a pinch. They're probably the closest thing we have to throw away trash. But most of Dol Abroth's army has a purpose it has a benefit it has a use and its use is not just die which is what peasant militia are basically there for are you coming again isengard or have you had enough you've had enough good then we shall i really want ginyard i really want to give ginyard back to rohan um let's pop into helm's deep and see if we can't get some more mercenaries keep bolstering our forces obtain a trade agreement with the realm of lothlorien um i'm sure i can probably do that Oh, then and built a barracks. It's now going for a stables. Then you can chuck in a guard barracks. And you've got everything else you need for the knight's lodgings, haven't you? He needs a guard's barracks at Prince's stables. And the guard barracks has just been queued up and the stables will follow. Yes, we only needed a steward's hall and we've already got one. Yeah, perfect. So that can just keep ticking away. Vildan Kalime built communal farming. Nice. Um, what's the best money making thing out of all of these options? Probably the leather worker, to be honest, because it was a flat plus 16. Well, you give a flat plus 40. A flat plus 40. Uh, and then that more people always means more uh, taxes, so that's probably the best bet. Finer Bell, you haven't even got a port yet. Do we go for the Master Masons before we start chucking these in? I think we will. Yep. Oh, you can change Seaward Lancers. Why can you train Seaward Lancers? Have you got the um, Master Horse Breeders Guild? Yes, you have. Oh, interesting. Well, we'll take some of them then and run them north. <laughs> You've got a journey, boys, but you'll get there. Amun Eithel has things queued. No issues. Gobel Mirland has built itself some roads, which is very good. Money should start to flow in from here once it really gets kicking. Let's add some more growth. Chuck in a market. So. Adrahil's Haven formerly known as Umbar, is also coming around to us. It's getting a royal hall now, interesting. And then a dockyard. 
We'll take a university and then Master Mason's in there as well. And that is a site of shipbuilding and commerce. A grand flag on the pole of Dol Amroth. <laughs> Which is not a human. They've emptied out Kyad Andros. I think we absolutely use this as an opportunity to strike. Damn bloody right we do. So the army, I can only assume, has gone east. Um, where's our spy? Find the Mordor force. Oh yes, look, Gondor are everywhere. Gondor, you are really pulling it out of the bag, aren't you? This is brilliant. Um, yeah, we can't train mercenaries in that region, but uh, we haven't been to Helm's Deep. Uh, no, we can't train mercenaries in Helm's Deep either. No, let's just hit Ginyard. They're definitely going to come for us. Um, but if we can take Ginyard, if we can just take Ginyard back, and that's the that's the the leap off point for Rohan to get back into hitting Isengard properly, right where it hurts. Yes, my lord. Um, so that's what we need. And Mordor, I don't think have reclaimed any of this. Can I get another spy? Uh, who can give me a spy? Oh, we can almost get Thillian Rangers. Oh, ten turns. That's cool. Um, Dol Amroth, you can probably give us a spy, can't you? No, diplomat. Spies only come from towns, don't they, actually? Yes, there we go, Lynn here. Thank you, Lynn here. Oh, I'll take your Haven Guard while we're at it. Oh, yes, and our movement can complete. I'm probably about to lose a lot of money, but... Who cares? Nerthor, you're going to stay there on your own. I'm taking the whole thing. Uh, give yourself a garrison, though. There we are. And Dol Amroth, you've got two archers. Oh, I wouldn't say no to archers. How far can the ship go? Not that far. Yeah, take those as well. And then train yourself some guardsmen. Oh, we still make money. Oh, fantastic. Right, and our little army comes. Perfect. Like, so get yourself up here as far as you can go. As far as we can go, which is the Harland. Uh, fun little fact for you, which I'm sure many of you already know. The port south of Minas Tirith is known as the Harland, which is also the name, of course, of the elven southern port up here in the Gulf of Loon. Yeah, because Harland literally means southern haven. And, of course, it is located to the south of Minas Tirith, and thus it takes that name. But if you're ever searching for the Harland and you want specifically the Gondorian port named as such, you will almost certainly not find anything about it, like images or things like that, because every image will be about the elven city of the Harland in Harlinden. Mordor have seemingly scattered their forces. Um, and they've had their go and they've not done anything. And here we go. This is just, this whole episode is just Isengard, fighting Isengard. I think that's what I might call the title, actually. Captain Grishnach comes. Grishnach has 559 soldiers, and they are all prime for a good solid charge from our Royal Guard and Royal Swan Guard. Oglur comes. Oglur is the garrison commander, and his army is actually really small. Um, it's got a lot of units, but there's like no one in any of those units. Oglur himself is the only threat. But do note that Captain Azrun is almost certainly going to attack us after this battle is concluded. He's not just going to let us attack Ginyard. <laughs> Although if we win this, we claim the town, don't we? But then they, they get that brief... They get their whole turn to try and stop you. You don't claim the town until it's all done and dusted. So, uh, I, I'm just sure. I know Azran is going to hit us. I just know he is. But the, the forces that are coming today are of little concern. Almost no consequence. Um, but we were attacked from the right-hand side. So the, the main army, the, the army... Even it isn't a threat, but the main army is coming in over there. But we just need three of you to deal with the army coming in from that side and the other cab will pull up to the hill there and start the, the battle enemy have brought up more now remember they've got crossbows and they're going to use them why didn't you run over there right there we are the crossbows are getting ready so we are going to end them they're probably going to get a volley off though oh they're doing arcing shots the tide of battle seems to have turned against us we must act and halt this turn of events. So they had time to get one volley off and they've absolutely wasted it. Although having said that, our cavalry's now about to get in the way of each other. Yeah, they all got in the way of one another. To be expected, but I wanted those crossbows shut down. Imri he'll go back in. Oh no way did you just die to an Uruk Reaver. Oh, I'm real. 
Oh my giddy aunt. Oh dear. He just died charging into Uruk Reavers. Not even an anti cavalry unit. Oh no. I mean oh I mean all it's gonna really do is um hamper our chances of cutting Isengard out of the fight. But then look at that, almost immediately our forces just mop them up and decimate our enemies. Oh, I'm real. There's nothing that can be done in those situations. Uh, I mean, obviously, you can try and charge so he's always on the, the sort of right side, if you will. Not right directionally, right as in correct side. So always charge so that he's just out of the fight, so he's not actually going to hit anything. Uh, but generally speaking, there's always a risk your general's going to die in a charge. Cavalry... That's why cavalry always take losses because they is like they take damage from charging into the enemy, which is why cavalry with higher defense is always better. It does mean then that we can throw the royal swan guard around now without any concern because they are essentially um, completely. I can't think what dispendable, disposable. They no longer have purpose. They will leave us at the end of this battle, whatever happens. So we might as well put them to good use. Oh, well, they should charge into Oglur if they can, actually. But then the Royal Guard aren't done and dusted. Who did I just charge you into? Urukai Raiders, nice. Where is Oglur? There he is. All right, let's go and hit him. Interesting that Imriel is dead, but we can still use his power. Royal Guard hitting some crossbows. They don't charge into the crossbows very well, do they? They're a really good unit, the Royal Guard. They should have killed loads of those. And they've basically killed none. Very disappointing. Alright, let's see how he fares over here. Uh, I'm really not worried about the main army. To be honest, I think the main army will die to the peasants. It, it is so pathetically small. But with Imrahil gone, how will our force here in Isengard actually continue to do anything? And goodness gracious, the bodyguards are good against cavalry. They just lost, like, none. Oh, dear. So the cavalry is going to be the real threat today. Uh, the bodyguards, sorry. They've hit into those again and gone again. Yeah, our army is, is whittling her down. If Azrun hits us today, that's the end of it. Right, go for those. Go for those. Go for those. How we diddling over here. If you killed them yet, five crossbows remain. Why are crossbows so bloody good against cavalry? For God's sake. What is the inherent defense of these Isengard horses? Well, so there you go. That's a fun fact for the future. Isengard, for whatever reason, I don't think we've set the we've, we've tried to set them up like this. They just appear to be um, insanely good against cavalry. I don't recall any sort of discussion where we said, let's try and make all Isengard forces good against cavalry. That's never happened. So why why are they shredding us like we are nothing? Also, our charges into that bodyguard is just not doing anything. We are just getting massacred every time we hit them. Where steel has failed, we shall try... Arrows. Have you finally finished all of those off? My heart has completely gone out of the fight in Rohan now. It will forever be marked as the sad and disappointing place where Imrahil paid with his life in service to Rohan. Uh, I'm, this army will disband upon the end of this and Rohan will be left to their fates. We have toiled on their front line, keeping them safe, keeping their people safe, ensuring the continuity of their royal line. Our blood has been spent. The entire force that we brought with us out of Dol Amroth now numbers less than 40 men. We have brought Rohirrim on board to help us, but has Rohan independently fought with us? No, they have not. They have sat back in Edoras, licking their wounds, whilst the men of Dol Amroth die on the plains of Rohan. And now, to top it all off, Prince Imrahil himself has died in service to Rohan. And they think we shall help them any further. They can think again. Dol Amroth will return to the stately 
peninsula of Belfalas. And there we shall help our solid and stalwart ally, Gondor, who has been fighting by our side and shedding blood with us. But we will not continue to defend Rohan as they allow our people to die in defense of their realm. I am disappointed in Rohan and I place the blame of the death of Imrahil firmly at their feet. We will have retribution for this death. Whether financially or otherwise, Rohan will pay for what has happened here today. More pressing matters concern us at the moment, the survival of our nation against the threat of Sauron, and that must have our attention, undivided as it must be. But once Sauron falls, a delegation will be sent to Edoras demanding reparations. The crossbows are still the last bloody unit fighting. <laughs> Oh, in amongst this mess and mash of dead bodies lies the finest son of the finest nation in Dol Amroth. He passes into the night, but he passes in fame and glory. Never will the name Imrahil be forgotten amongst the peoples of Dol Amroth. And he shall be held as the highest of all the princes. We've captured the enemy's general. Oh, we finally killed the general. The enemy army flees the field. Pursue and run them down. The enemy are 280. Vanquished. This is a great 265. Oh, <laughs> Never has a general's death felt and meant so much to me as it has done today. How are we to replace Imrahil? Imrahil! Adrahil was one thing. Adrahil was old. Adrahil had served Dol Amroth countless times. He'd fought in the battles that should have claimed his life over and over and over again. But he, still he fought, taking it to the last and only finally relenting when time itself grasped around his throat. He died as he lived, a warrior. And he was long lived. Imrahil was taken in his prime. He was not ready. He was not ready. <laughs> oh, so it becomes disappointing. Ah, oh, just as we get the night's lodgings as well. Yep, yeah, cue that up, please. There's two more Seaward Lancers. That's what you get from the highest tier stables for Dol Amroth. And then you need the Knights, knights Lodgings for the best things. We get Knights of the Silver Swan, Knights of the Tirith Iyar, Talon Knights, and Tirith Iyar Wardens. Our four most elite units. Istios built roads and is now building a port. And Ardemir built roads and is now building nothing. Um, it can get a fiefdom way station, interestingly. Oh, of course, because it's a castle outside of our heartlands. Remember, the fiefdom way station building has been extended to every nation in the game. Now, the UI and the names for it have not been done yet, and the beta testers uh, keep telling me that the building doesn't have a name yet, uh, but we know. Uh, but the coding for the, fire, for the building is done, so all AOR units, bar one or two, can now be retrained in castles across the world, um, uh, apart from within the whole region that they come from. Uh, I've mentioned that before, but it's, it is worth mentioning again, I think. Uh, let's chuck in a school and start making Ardemir like us a bit more. Right, where is he then? Elphir, you ascend to the rank of Prince. Ah, perfect. Just as you set out, you are to, to march on your enemies and prove your worth. Does Vildan Calame have a general? No, it doesn't. So, Kuruion, you're going to go up to Vildan Calame and become the governor there. Elphir sets out. He has huge shoes to fill. There's a pair of very worn boots by the mantle bearing the name of Adrahil, and beside them is a mighty golden shoe with which he has to put his feet. And if Rohan think I'm giving them this town with fully built buildings, they can bloody well think again, because I'm whoring Kinyard out, and I am taking it with me. And those that can survive the journey, you're coming to leave Rohan to their fates. Your orders, always happy to deal with you. I will give you Ginyard. We remain allies, where, uh, despite being on terse terms. We remain allies. Do you have any money? You're poor, but you're going to give me money because I've 
It's a bare minimum. A bare bloody minimum. How could we well, that seemed fruitful. Damn right. Captain Kellerblas, you hold the body of Imrahil. You must return to safe lands. Ensure that the army survives, and those brave Rohirrim souls who have fought and died with us will be honoured in Dol Amroth. Unlike the cowards who sit in Edoras. Look at this army! Look at this pathetic weakling! The faction heir himself sits in Edoras atop a horde of Rohirrim. A full Ered sits with him, whilst our blood is spilt in the plains of the Westfold itself. I shan't speak of it further. It'll only wind me up. That's going to end today's episode. Um, I am genuinely so disappointed in Rivers died. I <laughs> ah! Ugh. Against Uruk Reavers. Why can't you die against someone good? At least die to the Witch King or one of the Nazgul maybe. But no. Uruk bloody Reavers. Ugh. Well, there you have it. Imrahil is gone. Elphir now stands up and will he will, he will become the prince we know he can be. He's at the head of a relatively good army. There's no armor upgrades throughout any of that, though. We should really be looking into getting um, blacksmiths set up when we can. Chuck them in. Uh, I'm very well aware, by the way, that if you add a building in the queue after a building that reduces cost and time, then this building's effect will not take effect for the immediate building that follows it. it. It will have an effect on the buildings thereafter, but the one in the queue directly after it doesn't get its benefit. And I know that, but once you get to a certain point, which we are now definitely at, money is no longer an object. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. Um, money doesn't matter anymore. I am now just doing these things for ease. We are going to now make tons of money. Um, and it's only going to get easier and easier to make money as our, more and more of our infrastructure is built up. Places like Gobel, Mirland, and look at Adra Hills Haven. It makes four grand. And we're never going to lose this. This is ours forevermore. So um, money doesn't matter anymore. So I'm not bothered about queuing things up like that. But anyway, that will end the episode. I do hope you have an absolutely smashing 15th or 16th of December. There will be more Dole Amoth videos this week and there will be more Wood Elf videos. I loved recording Warhammer the other day. I'm, I'm really looking forward to playing as the Wood Elves and I hope you will enjoy watching. Um, but until we speak again, dear friends, Navar and Aden Pedamad Melonin, and farewell. <laughs>